Hello friends, it's Lisa, and today I'm going to be chatting about all of the books I've read in May, all my thoughts, my star ratings. I read seven books in the month of May, which is definitely not the highest amount of books that I've read in a month, but I'm actually very impressed by that number just because I was in such a big reading slump the whole month. It will probably start to become apparent as to why I was feeling so slumpy once we start to get into the books I was reading and my thoughts and my ratings, plus the end of April, the last like three books I think that I read last month were all like three stars, just like very meh average reads for me. So I think the last like month or so, over a month, I've had some not so great reads. I've had some standouts though, which we will talk about in this wrap up. So let's just get into it. Also, apologies for my voice. It's still recovering from seeing Taylor Swift a couple weekends ago. So she's just going to be trying her best. <laughs> All right. So getting into the first book that I picked up in the month of May, I listened to the audiobook for Flower Heart by Katherine Bakewell. This was the Besties in Books book club pick, I think for April, but their live show wasn't happening until a couple days into May. So I read the audiobook in like less than 24 hours to try and be able to make it to their live show. So in Flower Heart, you're following Clara and she has this magical ability to do with flowers and it's not always something that she has control over. She doesn't really have the best control over her magic all the time and one day she accidentally causes poisonous flowers to grow within her father's body. The only person that is capable of helping her is her old childhood friend Xavier who she hasn't talked to in years but he has come back to the town and he has offered to help her in exchange for her magic. If she's able to get control of her powers to help her father get these poisonous flowers out, she has to give Xavier her powers. And so this book they're trying to figure out how Clara can get control of her powers, how to save her father, while there's also this other like dangerous bad magic that's spreading throughout their land, throughout their village, and they're trying to figure out the source of that and how to put a stop to that as well. But I thought this book was cute. It's kind of described as like a cottage core fantasy, which I think is the perfect description of it. I think because it has those cottage core cozy vibes, I feel like it's not as high stakes as you would maybe anticipate these situations being, because um, there's a lot of characters whose lives are in like danger, but they don't feel super high stakes because of this like cozy cottage core kind of vibe. And I think for some people, they they might not like that, but I actually, I didn't mind that. I didn't mind that it was a bit lower stakes. I also really liked the magic system and how that played a role in like the mental health of the characters. A big reason why the main character Clara doesn't have control over her powers is because of her anxiety. It's like a physical manifestation of her anxiety. And I thought it was so interesting to have the magic system and different like magical things happening that are connected to people's mental health. One of the kind of, I don't want to say too much. I don't know if this would be a spoiler, but there's things happening throughout this town that are because people are feeling maybe depressed or lonely or anxious and they're trying to find a way to solve that and that's causing a problem within the town and like it has to do with the magic system. I don't think I'm explaining this very well but basically I just thought it was really interesting that the magic and mental health were very much like aligned with one another and that Clara not having control over these flowers, her magic was like a physical manifestation of her anxiety. There's even a scene when she's talking to Xavier and I again I can't say too much about this actual scene because it would definitely be spoilers but he is kind of talking to her about her magic and how it speaks to her and like this anxious voice that's in her head when it comes to her magic and he's like I never realized that that's what it was like for you because he doesn't struggle with anxiety. I just thought it was really interesting the way mental health was portrayed with this book and within the magic system. I just thought it was really interesting, very unique. I feel like you don't see mental health portrayed in fantasy books in that way a lot. So I thought it was really interesting to have that discussion within a fantasy novel. Most of my like issues kind of come from just wanting more from the story and more from the characters. I feel like there were a lot of different things going on plot wise. There were a lot of different things that were being brought up and these characters were dealing with and I just feel like none of them were explored enough for me. We didn't dig deep enough into anything. It all felt very surface level which I think is probably why it felt very low stakes because we didn't really fully like get deep enough into everything to understand understand how bad of a situation it was or understand the stakes. It just felt very surface level, like I was saying. So I just wanted more from everything. And I especially wanted more from Xavier, the kind of best friend, the childhood friends to lovers moment. I thought the romance between him and Clara was really cute. Love the childhood friends to lovers situation. There were a lot of really cute moments between them, but Xavier as a character, again, felt 
pretty surface level. I feel like there were a lot of things about his character that you learn, things about his past, and there's just a lot of things that should have made him feel more fleshed out and made you feel more connected with him. But for some reason, it just, it didn't get explored enough to really feel like you were connecting with him. So he just kind of got labeled as like the soft boy and then that was enough character development. I don't know. I just wish we got more from him. So that's kind of my like overall thing is I think there were definitely things I liked about this book. I just wanted more from everything. So I ended up giving this three and a half stars. Definitely like recommend if you want something like cute, cozy, low stakes. I recommend picking up the audiobook though. I think this is the type of book where if I read it physically, it probably would have taken me a lot longer to get through. I don't know if I would have been as motivated to finish it. So definitely recommend the audio because I think you can kind of listen to it a bit faster and get through it faster, but definitely not bad. Three and a half stars, just not. I wanted more. I wanted more from it. So the next book I ended up picking up was The Neighbor Favor by Christina Forrest. This is a romance between a editor at a publishing house and an author. And the editor's name, I don't remember, let me look, <laughs> Lily. Yes, she works in publishing and she is really obsessed with this certain like fantasy book. She kind of stumbled upon it in a bookstore one day and this author like has no like social media, no website, nothing. They're very like mysterious. You don't like there's no author photo or anything, but she loved the book. And one day she ends up finding out that he actually does have a website. She emails the author being like, hey, love your book. And then the two of them start emailing back and forth with one another and kind of start developing more than just like a fan and author relationship. It starts to develop into something a lot more until the author ghosts her. So she's like super devastated by this situation and that she just like lost contact with someone that she really connected with. And then, you know, a few months later, she needs a date to her sister's wedding for certain reasons. Her sisters are always kind of giving her a hard time about not being with somebody and are trying to set her up with dates. So she is like, I'm going to get a date to your wedding. And so she wants to get her neighbor, Nick, to be kind of her like fake date to the wedding. And Nick doesn't agree because he is actually the author that she was corresponding with. So he feels a little uncomfortable spending time with her without her knowing. So he doesn't agree to be her date, but he does agree to help her find a date. So the two of them kind of hang out trying to find her date for her sister's wedding. And while all of that is happening, Lily is completely unaware that Nick is actually the author that she was talking to. So I thought this was fine. There definitely were some things I liked about it. I liked Lily's character. I found her a little relatable just because she was always so like afraid to stand up for herself and afraid of confrontation. And I know like there are some reviews of people who are annoyed with her character because she never sticks up for herself and never defends herself. But I'm like, as someone who tries to avoid confrontation at all costs, I get her. I understand her. So I liked her character. I found pieces of her relatable. I also really liked that the two of them worked in, you know, the publishing industry. She is an editor um, for nonfiction, but she really wants to work on like children's books. And obviously he is an author. So there was a lot of like bookish discussions and they went to bookstores and they talked a lot about books and how like certain series from their childhoods meant a lot to them. And I just found that all very like relatable. So I really liked that aspect. And something that I have like mixed feelings about, I like it in some ways and don't in others, is the fact that we saw all of the emails that the two of them sent to one another, because I feel like that made it so we understood like exactly what their relationship was like when they were emailing and how close they got and everything. I feel like it provided a lot of context. I feel like if we completely missed out on those emails and then jumped into them like months later being sad that they weren't talking to one another, it wouldn't feel super believable or it's like I wouldn't understand why they were so devastated by the loss of this like relationship that they were developing. So I'm glad we saw the emails but I definitely feel like it could have been executed in a way that I would have liked a little bit more because basically part one of this book is just emails. It's like, I don't know how it translates into the actual book, but it's, I think like 50 pages on my Kindle or something. It was something like that of just the emails back and forth. So you get the setup of the story, her emailing him, all of the emails, and then it gets into the main like kind of plot of the story. And this is where I feel like I'm going to start to sound maybe contradictory to what I was just saying, where, you know, getting the emails, we start to understand like, why this relationship was significant to them, why it meant so much to them. But at the same time, a reason why I didn't love it is I felt like some of the emails felt so impersonal. It felt like it started out more professional and then slowly throughout all the emails, it became less and less personal. But it took so long for these characters to use like an LOL. It's like you are 20 five and 27 at this point when you're emailing something like that, they're around those ages. And I'm like, why are we talking as if this is a business email for so long and then all of a sudden you're talking about how you want to take each other on dates like it just felt like really weird like I didn't believe that there was that big of a connection between them it just went from professional to very personal very quickly <laughs> and I also I don't know I kind of went into this book knowing 
that Nick was going to know that he was the author that she was talking to and she was not going to know. I knew that there was going to be that secret between them for a big majority of the book. And at first it was fine. I think if I had gone into it not knowing that he knew and she didn't, I think I would have really disliked it a lot more. But I went into it knowing that. So I was set up for a little bit more success. However, I feel like there were a lot of moments where he could have told her who he was and he just didn't. And I understand that there were definitely things from his past, definitely some like trauma and things that he was struggling with that kept him from telling her. But at the same time it got frustrating to read and I don't know it started to make me a little uncomfortable with how long it went on that he didn't tell her who he was and that's where I feel like it could have been executed differently like maybe the emails that they were sending to each other secretly without knowing that it was each other could have been happening at the same time of her trying to find a date to the wedding I don't know it just the secret keeping did start to bother me as we got further into the book it didn't bother me immediately because I knew going into it that we were going to be having that problem but I just didn't really love it. I didn't love that he kept it from her for so long. And I think just overall, even though I found Lily in some aspects relatable, I didn't feel super strongly about either of these characters. So it made it hard for me to feel super invested in their relationship. There definitely, again, were some cute moments and I liked how bookish the whole book was, but I just think overall it wasn't like anything that I felt super blown away by and I just didn't feel super excited to finish it. I don't know. I'm surprised I actually finished it. I probably should have DNF'd it. Um, I ended up giving it three stars. Is that what I gave it? I feel like that was pretty generous. Yeah, I gave it three stars. It's probably more of like a two and a half if we want to be really specific. I just, I don't know. I think this could have been executed in a way where I enjoyed it more and I just didn't feel super invested in the characters or really what was going on. So yeah, as you can see, we continued on from the last few books of April into May, the three star train. It was just continuing. But finally, we've reached a break in the three star ratings. I ended up picking up Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner and I gave this five stars. So, so incredible, so happy. We finally not only had something higher than three stars, but it was a five star. So that's kind of iconic. <laughs> but Crying in H Mart is a very popular memoir. I'm sure if you haven't read it, you've at least heard of it, but um, a bit of the description for this book, I think puts it kind of perfectly. It says it's a memoir about growing up Korean American, losing her mother and forging her own identity. I feel like those are definitely the main topics and main things that Michelle's honor is discussing in this book. A big part of it does have to do though with her mom passing away from cancer, I think back in 2014. I don't have it written down, but I believe it was 2014 or 2013. But it's kind of Michelle just talking about like the lead up to finding out that her mom is sick and helping her mom through her illness. And also after she passes, dealing with that grief and how she coped. Also, she discusses a lot of, you know, just other aspects of her life growing up Asian American in a school that is predominantly filled with white classmates and also then going to Korea and learning about her culture. Also how food would play such a big role in her relationship with her mom. And that was actually like one of my favorite things about this book was seeing how Michelle and her mom connected over their culture and over food and how that played such a big role in their relationship. And also how Michelle used cooking and learning recipes as a way to cope with the loss of her mom and work through that grief. I just thought it was portrayed in such a beautiful way. And I definitely think that there are memoirs and nonfiction that I've read where the writing is maybe more lyrical, metaphorical. I don't quite know the, the words to describe it. And this definitely like wasn't quite like that, but I still think that the writing in this book was beautiful in its own way. And I think portraying grief and discussing such a topic that is so universal is just always really emotional to read and I think she portrayed it in such a beautiful way and honest way but yeah I loved the way that this was written I really loved Michelle's honors writing and I just really enjoyed it I, I mean obviously it was devastating saying I enjoyed it feels strange but it definitely was a very impactful read and it was my first five-star read since February so I mean, that has to speak for itself. Apparently, I'm not someone that gives out five stars very often anymore. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes it's just easier to talk about books that I didn't love as much versus like five stars. Sometimes I'm just like, yeah, I loved it. It was beautiful, heartbreaking, emotional, great. And that's all I can say. Yeah, again, this is a very popular memoir. So I think the, the reason it's so hyped up and the discussion around it is for a good reason. I highly recommend. Obviously, it is a very upsetting memoir, very emotional memoir, so I would go into it when you have the right headspace, but it is very beautiful, very emotional, and very honest, and I really, really, really loved it. Five stars. So after crying in H Mart, I ended up picking up Happy Place by Emily Henry. This is her newest adult romance. I feel like it's weird that these get categorized as romance because they're definitely more like fiction with romance. Anyway, this is her newest one that I'm sure you've seen everywhere, so you're probably sick of hearing people talk about it, but 
oh well, I'm gonna talk about it one more time. <laughs> but this is Emily Henry's newest book. You're following Harriet and Wynne, who were kind of a part of the same like friend group in college, and they actually end up getting together, they get engaged, they're together for a while, they're just like this really solid couple until they actually break up. And for certain circumstances and certain reasons, they don't tell their friends that they've broken up. And they kind of plan to tell them when this group of friends, they go on this vacation to Maine every single summer, and they plan to tell them on this current trip that they're taking. But they get there and they realize that this is not only going to be a more special vacation than normal for certain reasons, but it's actually going to be the last time that they're able to stay at this specific cottage that these friends have always stayed in every summer with all these memories. So Harry and Wynne, they don't want to ruin this last week in Maine that they have, this last time that they're able to do all the things that they've always done. So they decide to like fake date, pretend that they're still together, pretend they're still engaged for the sake of their friends. That obviously is going to cause some problems, some complications, going to be a little uncomfortable. And I absolutely loved this. I am so obsessed with this book. It was five stars, of course. It's actually my favorite book that I've read this year. To be fair, doesn't have a lot of competition because I haven't had very many five star reads. So there really isn't a lot to, for it to be competing against, but this is by far my favorite book that I've read this year. I love it so, so much. There are so many reasons why I loved this book and something that I think why people love Emily Henry's book so much and why certain books like people connect with more than others with her is the way Emily Henry is able to just take things that you have thought or experienced or emotions you have felt, things that you do, whatever it is, she's able to put that into words and put it into characters. And genuinely, I feel like this book specifically, Harriet as a main character, is probably the most relatable main character that I've read from, from Emily Henry. It feels like Emily Henry like wiggled her way into my brain and just like took inspiration and was like, there we go, here she is. <laughs> and I'm definitely someone that if I can really connect with a character, really relate to a character, not only do they become a new favorite character, I'm saying that word too many times, <laughs> but that makes it like makes the book something that I really enjoy. I think relatability and feeling really connected in that way makes me really love a book and why sometimes my favorite books and favorite characters are favorites. Also like yes, fake dating is one of my favorite romance tropes, but second chance romance, not so much. Don't really love it. But the fact that Emily Henry made a trope that I do not enjoy, she made me love it in this specific instance, is really powerful. I think the way that she wrote it, the way she executed it with some flashbacks and feeling connected to the characters in that time, but also still feeling connected to them in the current timeline, she just did it so, so well. It was executed perfectly, in my opinion. I really loved Harriet and I really loved Wynne as well. I think Wynne and his like mental health journey is going to be relatable to a lot of people. And I thought that that was really emotional and really powerful to read. I also really loved the setting of this book that it took place in Maine. Also like some of the flashback chapters when they're in school are set in Vermont. So there's a lot of New England vibes, which I personally loved. And I also thought was like really well researched and really well done. Sometimes you can read books where it's like places you live or places you've been and be like, this is like the bare minimum. Like I don't really feel like I'm there. I really felt like I was in Maine. This felt really, really well done and just added to the whole atmosphere and added to my enjoyment. I loved this friendship group that all go to Maine together. I feel like all of these characters had their own flaws and quirks and personality. They felt very distinct. I feel like something that I didn't love about book lovers was the main character's sister. I didn't feel like she was a fully fleshed out character. Whereas this, I feel like all of the side characters felt very distinct. They all had certain personalities, very full, like they were very fleshed out. They all had flaws. I think that was something that I really loved as well is this kind of exploration of friend groups as you grow into adulthood and how things can change and evolve and how that can be very scary. It's natural and it happens and you have to kind of just accept it that things are going to change as you get older. Things might not always look the same, but I think that fear of relationships and things changing is such a real reality for friendship groups. And I think that that was really portrayed in such a very realistic way. And this book also just made me cry. I think I literally couldn't stop crying the last like a hundred pages of this book. There were other moments where I was crying. There are just certain like quotes that are just so beautiful. I just, I don't understand this woman and her power. I just, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> I'm also once again, gonna mention my happy place Taylor's version playlist that I made. I'm very proud of it. So I want people to go and look at it and listen to it. <laughs> but that's another thing. Like I made a playlist for this book. I could not stop thinking about this book. And at this point, like I'm still thinking about it a lot. I'm thinking about these characters. I'm thinking about the emotions I felt while reading this book. And I just absolutely loved it. And there are certain Taylor Swift songs on that playlist that now when I listen to them, I think of these characters and it makes me even more emotional. And yeah, I just, I thought this was so great. I have a whole vlog where I talk even more about it, but just know favorite book of the year. Absolutely obsessed. I feel like there was a piece of me 
that Emily Henry like represented in this book and it just feels so personal so emotional I just I loved it I loved it so much every aspect I thought was so well done and I could go on and on forever but five stars favorite book of the year so far so yeah that was um a nice little break from my three star ratings my very average reads it was a nice little moment to break it up because we're back to the three stars of baby uh, I had to be humbled couldn't have too many five stars in a row that would just be ridiculous <laughs> so the next book that I ended up picking up was better than the movies by Lynn Painter this is a YA contemporary romance that I feel like is pretty hyped up like I feel like I've seen this book kind of everywhere so when I saw that it was on script I was like okay I need to check it out. I need to see what this book is about. So in this book, you're following Liz and she is kind of always looking for her rom-com moment. She's obsessed with rom-coms. So when her like childhood crush who moved away when she was younger ends up moving back to her town for senior year, she's kind of determined for him to like see her in this romantic way and agree to be her date to prom. And she ends up getting Wes, her annoying neighbor who is still friends with Michael, to kind of help her out, get him to like take her to parties or to take her to certain events so that she can hang out with Michael and get him to notice her. But as she starts to kind of hang out with Wes a little bit more, as she's starting to scheme with him on how to get Michael to become her prom date, she realizes that maybe she doesn't like Michael as much as she thought and perhaps her annoying neighbor Wes isn't as annoying. <laughs> so there definitely were things and aspects of this book that I did enjoy. Something that I feel like isn't in the description but definitely is something that should be like a content warning for anyone who needs it is that Liz's mom passes away when she's really younger so at this point at a, as a teenager she's still like grieving that loss and is really struggling with all of these like big senior moments happening without her mom there and a big kind of conflict throughout this book is her trying to connect with her stepmom but kind of always holding her at arm's length because she doesn't want to feel like she's replacing her mom even though she likes her dad's new wife like she just doesn't want to feel like her mom is being replaced. I thought that that was such a great portrayal of grief. I think there were a lot of moments where sometimes Liz would just like shut down and just all of a sudden be kind of done with the day and done with what they were doing or she would kind of lash out and I thought that that was just very very realistic I think especially like when you're a teenager and everything seems so big and like the world is falling apart with everything and then the fact that you're also grieving your mom like those things together like you're gonna not always react the best and I thought it was very realistic the way that this author portrayed grief in a teenager so I thought that that was really well done and I actually there were a few scenes within this book when they would talk about Liz and her mom and that grief that she was feeling that I was actually getting like very emotional and I would tend to cry I just can't handle the topic of grief I can't get through it without crying no matter what whether I like the book or not I will cry <laughs> I also really enjoyed the relationship between Liz and Wes them kind of going from these characters where she's really annoyed with him a lot they kind of prank each other to them eventually like having these feelings for each other and her being like oh shoot like I think I might like him I thought that that was really fun to kind of read about and to witness and there were a lot of really sweet moments with them and there's like this I don't want to say too much in case you do want to read this but they had like a secret spot that they would like like hang out in and a lot of the scenes there I really loved. I will say there were a lot of moments when they were like with other people because obviously like they were trying to get Michael to notice her so they were in group settings a lot but a lot of the moments that I really loved with them are when it was just like them two hanging out. I thought that that was like the best part of this book is just seeing those moments between them. See so yeah, I liked those things but I do feel like a big majority of the book like kind of everything else I just didn't really care. I just didn't really love. I don't know the whole like plot with trying to get Michael to take her to prom. I just thought that whole, that whole thing just went on a little too long like it was kind of fun at first but it just like it took up so much of the book and I was just like she clearly is not into him can we just move on like I don't know I just thought that that kind of dragged on a bit too long and I just also didn't really care like Michael was fine he seemed like a lovely man but I just didn't I just didn't care <laughs> I also recognize that maybe some of my like complaints come from the fact that I am not the target demographic and the target audience for the YA age range anymore so I totally recognize that so I think there could be things that I complain about that maybe it's just because I'm not a teenager anymore <laughs> but something else I just didn't really love and I think went on for too long is the fact that Liz decided to kind of lie to her best friend about why she was hanging out with Wes and how they were trying to scheme Michael to take her to prom she didn't want to tell her because she knew that her friend would kind of poke fun at her for always like wanting a rom-com moment and always looking for that like romanticized moment in her life and I get not wanting to be made fun of by your friends I understand especially when you are a teenage girl if you like literally anything you will be made fun of for it 
I understand. I've been there. I'm still there. I'm not even a teenager anymore. I think just being a woman in general, you tend to get made fun of for your interests. And that's like, at this point, I don't care. But when I was a teenager, I definitely cared and would get more upset by it. So I understand wanting to protect that and not wanting to be made fun of. But I also feel like there were a lot of opportunities where she could have told her friend what was actually going on and how she was feeling about lying and all of the, the lies that she had to come up with, all of the deceptions that she had to do was making her feel worse than if she had just told her friend from the beginning, like what was going on. So I didn't love that, but I understand, I understand her motivation for it. It was just kind of annoying and I kind of think it went on for a little too long. I also just didn't really love Liz as a main character and I want to specify that like I understand that she was also a teenager that was grieving the loss of her mom and all of the portrayals of her grief and everything to do with that I thought she was 100% valid and that's not where she annoyed me it was kind of just like the way she treated other people and like with other completely unrelated situations and just like I don't know I just didn't love her character I didn't hate her I just kind of found her slightly annoying <laughs> she kind of had the not like the other girls energy going on and I feel like a lot of the other characters around her were like yeah she's not like the other girls and it's like she likes rom-coms and she'll eat a burger like she's really not like it's not that quirky I don't understand so yeah the romance itself was very very cute and there were a lot of really good moments I loved the like love confession scene that happened but I feel like everything in between was just not my favorite. I just didn't really care or I think everything just kind of went on for a little too long so I ended up giving this three and a half stars. I can understand why people would really enjoy this and I think I would have loved this a lot more when I was younger and like in the YA age demographic so I totally recognize that this is just not targeted towards me but there are people my age that do love this so I definitely can see why people would love this. I think it was just not for me, but I do think the romance is cute. I think there's going to be a sequel after the like events of this book of them in like college. So I'm interested to see how that plays out, but I also don't know if I'm necessarily going to pick that up. So the next book I ended up picking up, I have no idea how I'm going to talk about this book because I don't even think I fully understand how I feel about it even now. <laughs> but I read The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Rajani Chokshi and this book, you're following this man who's never given a name and he meets this woman Indigo and they end up getting married but she's like hey if we're gonna be together if we're gonna get married the only rule is that you never ask me about my past and he's like bet let's go so they get married and they end up finding out that Indigo's uh, estranged aunt is ill and so they have to travel back to Indigo's like childhood home. He starts to kind of uncover some secrets about her past. And that's like what the Goodreads description gives you, but there's a lot more to this book than that. But I also feel like this is the type of book you kind of just have to go into it not knowing anything. I feel like that's the best way to approach it. Um, so how do I, how do I begin? I don't know. Um, I gave this three stars because I feel like for everything I liked, I also didn't like something or like even there were things that I liked that I also didn't like at the exact same time. So this is a pretty short book. It's not even 300 pages long and it took me like a week and a half to read it. Granted that was the week leading up to my Taylor Swift concert and like kind of after that so I was a little distracted but the first like 40 to 45 percent of this book I just didn't really understand what was going on and I just didn't really care. I didn't feel super drawn to pick it up. I wasn't excited to get into it. But then like when I was reading it, I wasn't hating it. I don't know. Like this is what I'm saying. I feel like my review for this book is so contradictory and I don't know how I feel about it. So it's probably not gonna make much sense. I really liked the writing. The writing was very beautiful and it was definitely like intriguing because Indigo is this very mysterious person and there's clearly a lot of things from her past that you don't know about and you start to see kind of flashbacks to her past in a very unique way and I again don't want to say too much but I thought it was really interesting that we were starting to get those pieces of the puzzle but it just takes a while to get into like the actual kind of main story and I feel like you actually starting to figure out what may be going on. It takes a while to get there but at the same time this is a type of book where it was really intriguing and I wanted to know what was up with Indigo but at the same time I could have DNF'd this book, never finished it, never found out what happened, and have been totally okay. Again, contradictory. I don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> this book was just really weird. It was very atmospheric and also like something that I thought was really interesting was 
Ahem, there goes the voice. <laughs> but something that I thought was really interesting was that something would be happening or characters would describe something or see something and you're like, is this book magical? Is it fantastical? Or is this just happening inside these characters' heads? Like, you're not really sure. And I thought that that was really interesting. And the ending, I, again, feel very mixed. I think a part of me likes it and then another part of me hated it because I feel like where things went, it seemed kind of predictable. Like, I feel like I thought that that was going to maybe be the explanation, like, pretty early on. And then you kind of get that as the answer and you're like, oh that's it like i was just kind of expecting more from the ending and so i think like it makes sense obviously if that's what i thought might have been happening and i i think a part of me liked it but then another part of me was disappointed that that's all it was so i don't know this book was just very confusing for me i don't think that this was my kind of book and that's okay i think there are going to be a lot of people that really love this i just don't think that this was my kind of thing so i gave it three stars but honestly like i don't know i don't know how i feel about this book it was just so strange so different from what i've read from before like i just don't even know how to describe it how to think about it so yeah i don't know i definitely would recommend i think this is the type of book that i could see people really loving but i just don't think it was for me it was just a little too weird for me. <laughs> and then the final book that I read in the month of May, I actually only just finished yesterday, so I haven't like fully wrapped my brain around my thoughts, so we're just gonna try our best. Uh, that I feel like has been the motto of this wrap up, just trying my best. Um, but the last book that I read was Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez, and this is a super popular romance book that I had been wanting to read for a really long time because I just feel like everyone loves this book. In this book you're following Alexis and Daniel, and the two of them seem very, very different at first. Alexis is um, a doctor. She is a part of this family that has this like long line of doctors. I think they've all been working at this same hospital for 125 years so she has this big legacy these big uh, shoes to fill and there's really no help from her parents because they put all this pressure on her and then she also has an ex who is a surgeon and is just awful and i wanted to punch him in the face but then we have daniel who is from this small town he is not you know as well off financially as alexis is but he runs a bnb He's like a carpenter, he's a mayor, he kind of wears a lot of different hats because it's a small town and that's kind of what you have to do. There's also a nine year, I think, age gap between the two of them and they just, they have very different lives and backgrounds, but they end up meeting through certain circumstances and they end up just having really great chemistry. They really fall for each other very quickly and realize that like what they have is very, very special, but there are a lot of problems that kind of come with that, the kind of situations that they're in, the jobs that they have, where they're from, the like long commute between where they live like there's just a lot of things that kind of get in their way so there's just a lot of choices that these two kind of have to make throughout this book and if this relationship is going to work to how do they proceed with their lives and their jobs and their families and these expectations and their friends and all of these things if they're so different and seem like they really shouldn't be compatible but they very much are and i really did enjoy this i thought it was very very cute i really loved alexis i really loved daniel i thought that they had great chemistry like they said a million times that was one thing that i didn't love about this book is kind of how repetitive sometimes this book could get like there would be lines that would be repeated like they would say something and then someone else would say something and then they would say like the exact same thing that they just said or they repeated how much they had chemistry so many times <laughs> which i understand them being surprised by because they do seem so different and that is like a big part of the book is how different they seem and how surprising it is that they do have this chemistry so i get them acknowledging it and being surprised by it but it is mentioned quite a lot and it's like you don't need to tell me i see it on the page <laughs> but other than that i did really enjoy it i think a lot of the the fears and the things that were kind of holding them back were very realistic i think alexis having all of these problems with her family and her ex and how that affected her and how she prioritized things in her life and how she handled certain things i thought was really like interesting to read because i think it's very realistic i think the way that she acted and her fears and insecurities it was really real to read like i definitely felt like a real character and i feel like you know the third act conflict with these characters it was frustrating to read but i also understood why it happened and that that could 100 percent happen in real life i also really loved daniel i thought he was so so sweet there were just so many great moments with him and like what he would do for her and like how he'd cook for her and how he knew all these things like i thought that was also really interesting that they both knew things that the other didn't so they were able to like show and teach each other different things and i love that a lot of this book is set in the small town that daniel is from i love a small town vibe even though i feel like 
a lot of times in like small town romances especially like the small town vibe gets like romanticized and I'm gonna be honest with you like yeah there are some small towns like that but that's not how they all are but it's fun to read about so I loved that and like loved the small town vibes and all of the characters in this small town I loved that he had a goat and a dog and there was also a pig in this town that was like the mascot that would just like walk around and be like dressed up it's just love that incredible anything with animals like that in a book I'm gonna love because I just love animals <laughs> and I also just really like the romance I thought it was very sweet I like I said they did have great chemistry the banter that they had I think the way that they discussed their problems and handled them I thought was realistic and I thought that they also had a lot of really sweet moments but also like there were some moments where she would be like talking about a patient or something that had happened like there was a one specific example that I can remember where she was talking about how someone died because they drowned and she's like the worst thing about that is like drowning is so quiet so unless someone is around to save you like it's not probably you're probably not going to be saved and this man goes I would save you if you were drowning <laughs> it's like okay dude time and place <laughs> like I loved Daniel I thought he was very sweet but there would be things like that where it's like she's literally talking about like a traumatizing event you're like I would never do that <laughs> just like I don't know it would kind of make me laugh a little bit but it was sweet like I understand why he would say those things but <laughs> it was just kind of like all right not the time buddy but like appreciate it um but there were just a lot of really cute moments I don't know like again this was a book that I really enjoyed I gave it four and a half stars I did really enjoy it and this is another instance of enjoying a book and not knowing how to talk about it um I think my only thing was just the writing wasn't always my favorite because of the repetitiveness or just sometimes those like cringy moments but for the most part it wasn't very cringy I thought the romance was really great and I think that that's important because I'm starting to realize with the more romances I read there are a lot of cringy romances out there and I'm really appreciating the ones that aren't and the ones that I do enjoy so this is definitely something that I would recommend I know a lot of people have read this already because it is so popular but I definitely understand the hype I really did enjoy this I loved the characters loved the romance loved the conclusion and how all of these characters handled their fears and insecurities and their problems and it was just really really great so four and a half stars but that was it that was the last book that I read in the month of May and now you probably understand why I was in a reading slump. We had a lot of three stars and like the end of April, like I was saying, we had the last three books of that month being three stars. So I'm hopefully going to be getting out of it soon. Part of your world was a nice way to end the month, a four and a half star. I'm just hoping that I can get a break from three stars for a bit and also just hopefully get out of this reading slump. I mean, seven books in a month is good. Like I'm not complaining in any way. I thought it was going to be way less than that because I just really wasn't in the mood to read, which is understandable considering all the books I was reading this month. <laughs> so yeah, I'm hoping Hoping June will be a bit of a better reading month for me. It's weird because May had like my favorite book of the year, but also a lot of just like meh average reads. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but hopefully next month we'll be out of the reading slump. We'll have a variety of ratings more than just three stars. <laughs> but yeah, those are all the things I read in May. I would love to know if you've read any of these things, your thoughts on them, or if you had any standouts from the month of May, whether it was, you know, five star read that you loved, something you didn't love, anything that just stood out from the month. I'd love to hear about it. But that is going to be it for my May wrap up. So thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.